Hello physics students, this is Mr. Downing. We're talking about free body diagrams. So we have seven kinds of forces we're going to put on these diagrams. These diagrams are sewn so we can see all the forces. And these forces will cause accelerations. Be careful that you're not thinking about velocities. It's not how they're moving, it's how they're being pushed. So we have the gravity force, Fg, that's always being pulled down as long as we're on Earth. The normal force is how a solid object pushes back up. The applied force, that's someone or something actively applying the action. The friction force is something that always opposes motion. Buoyancy is floating. It's because of a difference in, buoy in uh, density. Lighter densities will rise. Larger densities will sink. Lift. Lift isn't just picking something up. It's specifically a kind of force due to Bernoulli's principle. It has to do with um, wings on airplanes, helicopters, all of that. Tension is when we have something stretched across a long narrow band like a rope or cable or string or a chain or something like that. So our, our free body diagrams will look like these. So if we look at these situations, number one, there's a force down and a force up. This is something that has no forces on the horizontal and these two are the same size, which means they're canceling out. So it's at a constant velocity up and down. It might be moving up and down, or it might be at rest. But whatever its velocity is, whether it's 0 or 100, it's not changing. If we look at this one here, still no forces on the horizontal, but there's a larger force up. So this is accelerating up. It's so like number 5 would be accelerating down. So we have to think, is it at constant velocity, or is it accelerating? Like number two and number three, these both have constant velocity in the vertical. Whether velocity equals zero at rest or velocity equals 23, moving. But in the horizontal, number two is constant in the horizontal and number three is accelerating in the horizontal because this arrow is bigger than that one. This force is stronger than that one. Okay, so let's practice with drawing some of our own. So if we have a box sitting at rest on the table. We draw our object. There is a force of gravity pulling down and an equal and opposite force normal of the ground pushing back up. No forces on the horizontal. Okay. If we look at a box accelerating across a table, it's being pulled. So in the vertical, it's still being pulled down by gravity, and it still has an equal and opposite force normal. These two forces are the same size. They're canceling each other out. We have no acceleration, no net force in the vertical. Now it is so it's accelerating by being pulled. So there is an applied force, and then opposing motion would be a frictional force. Now this arrow is larger than this one because it is being accelerated. Now if we look at a boat floating on the water, moving forward at constant speed, it's being pulled down with a gravitational force. Now normal forces are only from solid objects. In this case the boat has a buoyancy force, it's floating on top of the water. It's moving forward at constant speed, so it has an applied force from the engine. Then there's a frictional force opposing the motion. Now these arrows are the same size because it is not accelerating. It is moving, but not accelerating. Remember our free body diagram does not tell us how it's moving. Okay, Our question might tell us how it's moving, but our diagram only tells us about acceleration. It tells us about forces. Forces cause accelerations. So if we have a man inside an elevator accelerating up, so there's still the force of gravity if the whole elevator is pushing up, that means the floor is pushing up on him. That's a normal force. And it's going to be larger than the gravitational because the elevator is pushing him up. Okay? Let's try doing it backwards. So if we look at the scenario, number one, this could be a thousand different things. So we could say, we could say number one is a calculator sitting on a desk. And then that would be that's FG and that's FM. Okay, we could say 
that it was a um, boat sitting still in water, okay? In which case it's very similar, except this wouldn't be a normal force, this would be a buoyant force. Okay, so number two, number two might be my boat still, it's not sinking or flying into the air, there's no acceleration in the vertical, but now it's moving at a constant speed, there's forces left and right. So we could say boat cruising at constant speed, which would make this the force of gravity, that the force buoyant, that would be my applied force, that would be a frictional force. Or number three would be my boat accelerating. So we still have all the same labels here. The only difference is this is accelerating. Now there's tons of different examples I could do. This could be the same thing with a car. All I have to do is change it to a car, but it change these B's to N because it's not the car is not being pushed up by the buoyant force from the water, it's being pushed up by the normal force from the road. There's tons of examples where this shape of this free body diagram would fit. For example, number four, large force up, smaller force down. That could be my man inside an elevator accelerating up. It could be a guy with a rocket pack going accelerating, striking up into the air. An applied force pushing him up, gravity pulling him down. Okay, there could be all kinds of options. We, it's important we think of it in both dimensions. Think about the horizontal and then think about the vertical. And you have to think about its motion in the horizontal. So this is accelerating to the right and it's accelerating up. Whereas here, number seven, constant velocity, left and right, accelerating down. So this might be a plane that's cruising through the air, but is accelerating down to a lower altitude. All right. Now, we don't always have our forces being opposed by anything. There are times where we could have just an arrow to the right. So we could say um, this might be a ball thrown through the air. Okay, so it's already thrown earlier, in which case it's not being pushed anymore, but that could still be the force of friction. Whereas that would be also a force of friction, force of gravity. The, uh, so in this case, this would only work if we were at a terminal velocity, meaning the ball is going so fast it's no longer accelerating. A better example would be a ball rolled across a table. So that would be a normal force. So the ball is rolling across the table. We're not pushing it across the table, but the ball is slowing down because friction is pushing on it in one way. And there's not something else pushing it the other direction. Okay. Now an example here, down we commonly think of gravity, but here there's not a force opposing it. So this has to be a unique situation. So this might be a um, this might be the the moon. The Earth is pulling down on the moon, and it's not being pulled in any other direction. Okay, of course, in this case, would be ignoring the sun as not the major player. But um, there's no friction for the moon because it's moving through space. There's not air. Or we could just say dropping something in a vacuum. Maybe you're dropping a feather in a vacuum. If you Google dropping feather in a vacuum, I think you'll see. Um, what I'm talking about by no opposed forces. Okay, but this is the basic idea. The idea that there's different directions, that the horizontal and vertical are independent, that forces come from different sources, and that whenever the arrows are equal, those forces cancel out, so no acceleration. If one force is larger, then we'll have an acceleration. Forces cause accelerations, not velocities.